Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in once again to Queen Amadai TV, More Than Meets the Third Eye. All right. So as you're coming in, please get those likes up. Please like and share. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, be sure to click the notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. Okay. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Underscore A Shakur, Twitter at DGoddess27, and on TikTok at Dr. A Shakur. All right, so let's get ready to get into it. Everyone get those likes up. Y'all know they have me shadow banned on all channels. Okay, hello, Mr. Hotel, Kathy B, Byron B, Orange Moon is in the house, Emma's blessed, Gail, okay, I see you. All right. All right, Gina Lane is here. So as you all know, I've already told you, hey, Shelby, uh, I've already told you all that we're going to be doing trivia today. Uh, the trivia is going to be uh, for the giveaway of uh, two ebooks, maybe three. Uh, but anyway, for the, uh, the smoothie recipes, okay, the smoothie recipes, which, by the way, are on sale to those of you who don't have the self-elevating and the higher frequency memberships, you can purchase them for $5 if you are a member. If you're not a member, you can purchase them for $8, okay? Uh, that is for the Nefarious Smoothie um, ebook, all right? 10 delicious smoothie recipes to get your day started. Okay, so... Or throughout the day, whenever you choose. Okay, so with that all being said, let's get ready to get into it. Now, let me look on here real quick. And for those of you, as I told you, the winners of the uh, trivia have to be a member of the channel. If you're going to participate in the trivia, you have to be a member of the channel. If, however... If, however, I see people putting answers in the chat, right? <laughs> Sound decent, nefariously delicious. Okay, thank you. Okay, so if I see people just putting answers in the chat, which we're not supposed to do, you're supposed to send the answers to my email. Okay, please send your answers to my email. I want all of the answers sent to, and moderators, please put this email address in the chat. Send your answers to the root of all evil 227 at gmail.com okay hey claudette it's okay if you're late we haven't started yet hey melanin a1 i'm just telling everyone about the trivia the trivia is going to be for the giveaway of the ebook okay i'm going to give away a couple of the ebooks i may give away three it just depends um on how much time i have left because i have something to do right after this so uh the ebooks are going to be given away to those who win the trivia, but you have to be a member of the channel in order to win. You have to be a member of the channel. Hey, Capricornus. Okay. Uh, so like I said, no answers in the chat. It's very easy instructions. No answers in the chat. Okay. You'll be disqualified. And then I'm going to start penalizing people uh, by not allowing you to participate in the trivia. If you continue to put answers in the chat, I should not have to repeat myself. Uh, so please send your answers to the root of all evil 227 at gmail.com. Okay. Let me put that in here now. And yes, the trivia is for the members. The root of all evil. Okay, the root of all evil227 at gmail.com. There is the email right there. Moderators, please make sure you all put that in there every now and then. Okay, and you will have 40 seconds for the trivia, for the questions. Okay, each question you'll have 40 seconds. I'm going to do a countdown uh, on my little, um, my little, uh, well, actually on my phone, I'm going to pull up the little stopwatch and it's going to have 40 seconds for you to get the answers in. If the answers are not in when I stop the clock, if your answer isn't in, then your answer is not going to count. Okay. Your answer is not going to count. Okay. So with that all being said, and yes, it's spiritual trivia, Reggie. Absolutely. Okay. So, and this is going to be on a video that I played a few days ago. This wasn't just for members only. This was a video for everybody, okay, that I played a few days ago or that, yeah, that I uh, played a few days ago. So this is going to be where I got the questions from. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this PowerPoint because we're going to talk about how we create our own reality with our thoughts. And we've talked about this before. Uh, but also, let me say this. For the members, this is part one for you. Everyone is going to see this part. This is part one. But for the members, I'm going to be uploading tomorrow part two to this to this information. Okay, I'm going to be giving you all some extra information. And I will be uploading that tomorrow so you can watch it at your leisure. Okay, so with that all being said, uh, let me go ahead and put this PowerPoint. Everyone, please like and share. Thank you in advance. And you all will see that the membership, the members get perks that sadly I can't give to everyone else. Let me remind you, you can get a membership for as little as $2.99 per month. Now that is mere peanuts. Okay, if you can't afford $2.99 per month, you need to ask yourself, what are you doing wrong? If you can't afford $2.99 a month for a membership, then you definitely need spiritual advice. Pay attention. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Because that's not even a dollar per week. Okay? That's not even a dollar a week. All right? So miss me with it. And, um, <laughs> and with that all being said, you can get memberships for $2.99, $6.99, um, $24.99, and $49.99. Okay, and the ones who have the $49.99 memberships not only get free ebooks every month, but they also get a free master class. Okay, they get a free master class once a month, and that master class class is worth at least a hundred dollars by itself, and they get that for free. So pay attention. If you have a self-elevating membership, which is $24.99, you will get the free ebook once a month along with all the other perks that, that are afforded and awarded to those with the $2.99 and $6.99 membership. Okay? That's how that goes. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> Gail said Queen is a mess. Okay, so with that all being said, without further ado, let me go ahead and pull up this PowerPoint. Everyone, please get the likes up. Thank you in advance. And I may ask one of the questions for the trivia. Maybe I'll get one from this PowerPoint presentation. Okay, let's get into it. All right, we create our own reality with our thoughts. Now, what cognitive science has to say about how we experience life? This is where I gathered my research from and added my own thoughts, views, and opinions, and some of my own uh, scholarly information. OK, because this is about how our what cognitive science uh, says about things that we experience in life. You see, there are a lot of people who are offended by the idea that we create our own reality. They see it as a version of victim blaming. So basically, some people feel like we don't create our own reality. Bad things happen all the time. Bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to children, even babies. So how can you say that people create their own reality? Where we're going to get into that, okay? We create our own reality with our thoughts. Now, we don't want bad things to happen. Nobody asks for bad things to happen to them. Well, I couldn't agree more. The mind is the master power that molds and makes. That's what James Allen once said. Now, you see, I've been helping people change their thinking and behavior through positive thinking and affirmations. That's one of my spiritual gifts. That's one of my talents, that I have the ability to help people change their life and to change their habits and, and patterns of negativity by helping them with their thinking and telling them to speak positively upon themselves and giving them pointers. I have also seen people who bring negative energy into their own lives by pessimistic thinking. Therefore, I can say that I absolutely agree with the idea that we do indeed create much of our reality. Okay? I see people do it all the time, bring negative energy upon themselves. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. We don't create every single thing about our reality but we create a lot of things about our reality. You see, there are three buckets of life, three buckets in life, things that we control, things that we influence, 
and things over which we have no control, such as the weather. And, you know, some people want to deny this, but denying it only denies their own power. When you manifest things and focus your thoughts and energy on things, that's a form of creating your own reality. Whatever you give your energy and time to, that is what you manifest. Manifestation is a way to create your own reality. Now, there are some things we can't control, like the weather, tornadoes, earthquakes. Okay, when someone leaves this world, when someone, you know, uh, when their life comes to an end, we can't control those things. Sometimes we can if we're the person who takes the person out or if we do something to ourselves. You can, but sometimes the nature uh, or basically nature has to take its course. And some things are specifically, you know, uh, done by the most high. Some things are done by Satan. We can't control everything, but we can control some of the things that we can also influence some of the things. What is not under our control are the many random events of life. The families that we're born into, for example, earthquakes, pandemics, illness, job layoffs, the death of loved ones, fires and car accidents, to name a few. These are circumstances that we experience and events that we are aware of, but they're not under our control. We influence other living things with our own actions. For example, if you walk into a room and you see a stranger sitting there and decide to slap them in the face, that person will surely respond differently than if you had instead smiled at them. You know, energy is contagious. I always tell you that. But you don't determine how that person responds. You see, that's what you don't get to do. That person could decide to run away, turn the other cheek, or slap you right back. It all depends on their energy. We influence other living things with our actions. And, and here's the thing. I've told you before how energy is contagious and how if you walk into a room and everyone's smiling and glad to see you, your energy is boosted. You feel high vibrational. You're happy and excited. But if you walk into a room and everyone's looking at you, rolling their eyes and whispering and looking with a frown, and then, you know, like, what are they doing here? Who invited them? And then you're like, what the heck's everybody looking at me for? What's their problem? Why are they hating? So now you have a negative viewpoint because it's all about the shifting of energy. But what we need to learn to do is to not allow other people to dictate our moods and to dictate the flow of our energy. When you allow other people to dictate the flow of your energy, which direction your energy is going to go, they are putting you in a box. They are actually being in control of you. Okay, you are allowing them to control you. This is why some people who are so petty, now, I'm petty myself, but I feel like I'm petty in a funny way, not nefarious. But some people will purposely do and say things to trigger you because they know that they're going to invoke a, a emotional response. They know this. And so they're going to purposely say things to make you feel some type of way because they want to control your narrative. And that's why we have to, you know, control our emotions. We have to not allow our emotions to lead the way when we say or do things. Because when people know they can just push your buttons and get you all upset or make you feel bad about yourself, make you feel, you know, have low self-esteem, they're controlling you in a sense. And so you don't want anyone to control you. You're the captain of this ship. Okay. You are the captain of your own ship. You are supposed to dictate the narrative of your life, not allowing other people to do so. What we control and where we really start to create our reality is in how we perceive, interpret, and think about the events in our lives that generate our feelings about those events and how we subsequently respond with our behavior. Now, no one can choose your thoughts or actions. That's what they can't do. Those are yours alone, unique only to you. Now, people can influence your thoughts and actions. They can tell you things, you know, that make you think a certain type of way. And often we find people that are supposedly our friends, but they're actually haters sitting on the sidelines, uh, acting as though they're there to cheer us on, but really they want a front seat to our demise. And so these people will very often try to influence your thinking. Let me give you an example. 
You may be in a happy, healthy, loving relationship with someone that cares about you and you care about them, but every now and then you have problems. Well, we all do. Our relationships have problems every now and then, some serious and some not so serious. It could be something as minuscule as arguing over the toothpaste. You squeezing it from the bottom. It's the other person squeezing it from the top. The person leaving the toilet seat up, right? Leaving the toilet lid up or down. It could be something like that, or it could be something serious, such as cheating, such as spending too much money, something such as yelling or calling you out of your name. But nevertheless, you only seem to exasperate these issues and escalate them into something far worse when you share the negative aspects of your relationship with others. Okay, A relationship should be between you and your mate. If your mate is doing things that you don't like, you should have conversations with them, not conversations with your friends. You see, first of all, a lot of times your friends may not be in a happy relationship themselves and make no mistake because misery does love company. Now, sometimes these people are not purposely giving you bad information, but sometimes they absolutely are. And other times they actually think that the bad information they're giving you is the best information. And that's because it's their experience. Okay? Okay. And you should never ask someone who has a bad relationship for, for relationship advice. Sometimes people purposely tell you bad things because they don't want to see you happy. So that's why, and here's the thing. Sometimes we go to family and close friends telling them all of the flaws and all of the ne negative things about a person we're in a relationship with. And then we wonder why the family or the friends don't care for this person. Now, when you're mad, you get upset, you go running your mouth and telling your business. And then when you're back all in love with them and you've worked things out and everybody's all happy, now you still got the family and friends over here looking at them crazy. And this all happens because people put too many people in their business when it's in their relationship. You create that reality. You know, they say everything happens for a reason. Well, sometimes the reason is because we make poor choices or make stupid decisions. Okay. Now, if your significant other breaks up with you and your thought is, I will never find anyone else to love me again, then you will likely experience some very negative emotions like depression. And you're likely to engage in behaviors consistent with these feelings, such as staying in bed, you know, just laying around the house, not wanting to take a shower and go out and enjoy life because you're all stuck in a rut, just feeling bad about yourself, feeling sorry for yourself because you're allowing your mind to tell you all these negative things. You're not thinking about the flip side because there's always an element of something that you can use, you know, for good, even in something bad. For example, you can use it as a teachable moment and say, okay, well, this relationship didn't work out because maybe I did too much of this or I allowed them to do too much of that. Next relationship, I'll do better. I'll be better. I'll set boundaries. I won't allow people to run over me. I won't let them talk down to me. Or I won't be lying and cheating. You can do things like that. You can always make something for good that was for bad. Instead of just harping on the negative aspects. Okay, there's, there's very often a silver lining to even the darkest of clouds. Now... You're likely to engage in behaviors consistent with those with these feelings as you're as such as staying in bed. And if, on the other hand, your thought is, I'm glad this loser is out of my life, then you're likely to feel and act quite differently. You choose which thought to think. You do that. Now, here is where the creating part gets really serious. Pay attention. Your thoughts, if you think them over and over and over and assign truth to them, well, they become your beliefs. Beliefs create a cognitive lens through which you interpret the events of your world. And this lens serves as a selective filter through which you sift the environment for evidence that makes up with that matches up with what you believe to be true. Okay. That's what we do. We want to hear what sounds like what we are thinking. Have you ever had someone ask you a question, ask you for advice, and then when you gave them the advice, they didn't like it? That's likely because it didn't suit their narrative. 
They wanted you to say something that was in agreement with what they were already thinking. Or they wanted you to say something that was the opposite of what they were already thinking. You see, sometimes people ask for advice just to, you know, uh, reaffirm their own thoughts or as a way to feel like whatever they're thinking is not necessarily the case when they know that it absolutely is. You see, some people don't want to know the truth. For example, if someone thinks that their spouse is cheating on them, lying and cheating, they may come to you and tell you the scenario and then ask you, what are your thoughts? And if you say, well, I absolutely think they're cheating. Well, that's not what they really wanted to hear. They wanted you to say, well, you know, maybe you're just feeding too much into it. Maybe you're reaching. That doesn't mean that they're out cheating. Just because you saw someone's phone number and some text messages and they didn't come home till late, like three in the morning, and then they took a shower before they got in the bed and they didn't want you to touch them. That doesn't mean they're cheating. That's what they want you to say sometimes. But if you don't say that and you agree with them, well, sometimes that's not what they want to hear. Okay. Uh, for example, if you believe you, if you uh, in the, I'm sorry, if the belief you form when your partner breaks up with you is I'm not attractive enough. And then you go to a party where 10 people tell you, you know, uh, that you look great. And one person says your outfit is interesting. You're likely to go home and fixate on the interesting comments. Cause when people say, Oh, that's really interesting. Well, that could mean it's good or it could mean it's bad. Maybe they use the word interesting because they didn't want to hurt your feelings. And that's what you may be focusing on. And so rather than thinking that the 10 people who gave you the compliments, instead of going along with that frame of thought and thinking positive about yourself, you're going to fixate, some people that is, will fixate on the negative. What if they mean that my outfit was interesting? What are they exactly trying to say? You might think other thoughts consistent with your beliefs, such as, why do I always pick the wrong thing to wear? I have no style. Other people dress so much better than me. I must look like such a loser. No wonder my ex dumped me. <laughs> Some of you may actually be thinking that way. I know someone who absolutely thinks that way, and I know I'm laughing, but... There are some people who, no matter what situation they're in, they always want to take the pessimistic mindset. And I keep telling this person continuously, stop being pessimistic. Like you have such a negative way of thinking. No wonder your life is down in the dumps. Because how do you expect to have a positive life with such low vibrational thinking? It's a pattern. But some people sadly would never get out of these frame of thoughts. Uh, the other 10 people who said you look great might as well not have even existed. You only took the evidence from the environment that was consistent with your own beliefs, which then reinforced your original belief that you're not attractive enough. What some people don't realize is that sometimes you will never be enough for the wrong person. So, if you have a relationship that fails, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Sometimes there's something wrong with them. And no matter how you try to change or, you know, do things different, you're just not going to be enough for the wrong person. And that's just what it is. And you find evidence in your environments. Because the brain's selective filtering system, often referred to as priming, works on an activation inhibition model. When the brain is primed by a certain belief to look for something, it tends to shut down competing uh, neutral networks, or I'm sorry, competing neural networks. So you actually have a hard time seeing evidence to be uh, to the contrary of an already existing belief. So you can't see anything outside of what you're already thinking about. You've already made yourself believe this. So no matter what someone else tells you that's the opposite, that's just not going to make sense to you. You'll just think, oh, they're just trying to be nice. You know, they don't really mean it. They just feel sorry for me. On the other hand, when some hater comes along and reinforces your own negative thoughts of yourself, you'll believe that. And haters know this. Specifically, narcissistic people know this. So they'll give you more of that because they want you to continue to feel bad about yourself. Because when you feel bad about yourself, you can't thrive. You can't thrive. 
And the brain filters out the positive things that don't go along with your thought process when these things happen. Now, that's why people who are depressed see a more depressing world. It's also why you're so convinced that your view of the world is the truth. What most people don't realize is they are participating in creating their own version of truth. And you should ask yourself that, what is your version of truth? What you take in from the environment through your belief, filter, from your belief filter becomes your self-concept. Your self-concept is made up of I am beliefs about who you are presently and I can beliefs about, I can beliefs about who you are capable of being in the future. I can and I am. The power of I am. I'm going to uh, premiere that video tomorrow for everyone to see. Now, from these I am and I can statements, you create stories and narratives about who you are. You tell yourself, and uh, this is what you tell yourself and other people all day long. I am not good enough. I am not lovable. I cannot do it. I am smart. I am capable. I can achieve my goals. You are the main character in your story and you write the script based on your self-concept that is largely self-created. The power of I am. Let me write that down so I remember to post that tomorrow. You write the story of what you think is likely and are possible based on what you believe is true. And then you take actions consistent with those expectations. When you act on what you expect will happen before it actually happens, you participate in creating the experience. So if you feel, oh, it's going to storm outside. Oh, you know, I'm going to have a bad day. Nothing's going to go right for me today. If that's what you're already thinking, you have a preconceived notion, that's what you're expecting, anticipating. Well, that's likely what's going to happen. On the other hand, if you say, you know what, it's going to storm outside today, but guess what? Even though I don't like driving in the rain because people drive crazy, I'm going to take this time to stay at home, focus on what I need to do, get some extra work done. You know what? I'll do some laundry. I'll clean the house. I'll read a good book. I'll find me something good to watch on TV and sit around and eat me some snacks. You could do a lot of things, but it all depends on how you focus your thoughts. For example, if you don't have a positive self-concept and you fear rejection when you go to go on a date or a job interview, you're likely, you're not likely going to present yourself in the best way, right? Uh, by you're not going to present yourself, your best self by acting calm and self-confident. You're likely going to be anxious and act in a way that is more likely to result in rejection. This is why people are nervous. People are nervous because you're not sure about yourself. When you're nervous, you're unsure. You have something called self-doubt. When we're nervous, when we're shy, we also have something called self-doubt. When you're shy, you're also not sure. That's why it's very important what you say to children. Children are very impressionable. Children who are shy, that comes from them not being lifted up. That comes from them being unsure. Why are children unsure? Because someone is not telling them things about themselves to boost them, to lift their spirits, and to make them have confidence in themselves. So they'll be a shy little child. Okay? That's very important. People who are nervous and shy tend to be people who are just not full of self-assurance. Hence the self-fulfilling prophecy that we act in ways likely to bring about what we believe is true. That is the very definition of creating your reality, the self-fulfilling prophecy. You're participating in creating your reality, whether you know it or not. 
There is nothing magical or woo-woo about it. It is simply the way our brains operate. Remember, thoughts are electromagnetic energy. When we think something and focus our energy on it, well, the universe can see our thoughts. The universe reads into our thoughts and so does our subconscious mind. And the thing is, the subconscious mind and the universe take things literally. So if you don't want to be broke or sick or single and you keep focusing on being broke or sick or single, well, that's what you're going to get. You're going to keep manifesting more of it. I've had people tell me, and I've told you all this before, people say that, oh, my prayers are not answered. Uh, God never answers my prayers. Well, that's because you're praying wrong. You have to pray for things to happen and believe that these things will happen. But if you're sitting there praying, oh, God, please send me a husband. God, please send me a wife. And then at the same time saying, I know I'm never going to get married. Nobody's ever going to want to marry me. I don't have my finances right. Well, if you're saying all of that, then what's your point of praying? Because you're already drawing your own conclusion. Remember, the Most High gives us all free will. So you can ask the Most High for something, but if this is what you're thinking, well, that's what you're going to get. When you deny, reject, or are unaware of this, then you have very little power and will feel like the victim all your life. Oh, woe is me. My life sucks, but you'll blame everybody else rather than yourself. But with awareness comes choice. You have a choice about what you think. When you start to understand the process and make it work for you, now you are empowered to be in charge of the life you create. Will there always be things that happen that are outside of your control? Well, of course, that's guaranteed. But what you do control is how you think and feel and what you subsequently do about those uncontrollable events. You see, you may not be able to control things that happen, some things, but it's all about how you react to them when they do occur. Do you look at the glass half empty or do you see it as half full? Do you look at each day as a new beginning or do you just dwell and harp on the past? That is how you shape and create your life. You control how you think and feel. There are always people who will thrive in times of crisis. I'm one of those people. Most likely it is because they choose to see opportunity as opposed to disadvantage. That's what I do. I always look for the good side. And especially when I know that someone is trying to hinder me, trying to bring me down, wants to see me lose. I'm so competitive and so determined and dedicated that I'm just not going to let it happen. No matter how you come against me and you are for the detriment of me, I'm going to always beat you because I'm not going to allow anyone to sway my own thinking. I'm not going to allow anyone's thoughts to override my own. No one can influence the way that I think because I know what I want and I know how to get it and I know what I need to do. But I don't allow other people's pessimism and hate or negativity or discouragement to ever override my own motivation, inspiration, and encouragement of myself. That's why it's called self-esteem, not what people are telling you to bring you down esteem, not hatin's, haters' esteem, okay? It is easy to break out of autopilot and take charge of this process, or is it? Well, no. You see, the more difficult your life has been, the harder it may seem at first. But it is a doable, it is doable, and it's like anything else. Once you get the hang of it, it gets a lot easier. You see, when I was younger, I didn't always know how to handle problems. And when things didn't go my way, I would get frustrated. And I would feel like, why is this happening to me? How come I can't get this to work? That's how I would feel. But then I had to learn that I'm not special. There is anyone can have problems. Anyone can, you know, go through hard times. Things don't always go our way, so we shouldn't expect them to. But you can change the outcome when you start changing the way you think, staying away from negative patterns of thought and focusing on more positive, uplifting things. Because sometimes things not, are not going to work. Because the Most High doesn't have that planned out for you. If you're in a relationship with someone who's abusive, who's always yelling at you, who's just not a good fit, 
but you keep on trying and trying to work it out and do things better and change yourself so that they won't get angry. Well, sometimes the most high is just not going to let that happen because that person's not for you. And the sooner you wake up and realize that you're not the problem, they are, and that this situation is not going to work because it's not supposed to, and that some people come into our lives only for a season, and that is to teach us something. Maybe this person came into your life to teach you to have more love for self. Maybe this person came into your life to teach you to set boundaries. Maybe this person came into your life to teach you that you should not ever under any circumstance settle for less and allow someone uh, to talk down on you and uh, to beat you down mentally or spiritually. Maybe that was the lesson they taught. And once the lesson has been taught, then it's time for you to now move on and go and find the person that the Most High has waiting for you. But some of you won't do that. You'll continue to try to mend fences and focus on this relationship and this low vibrational toxic person and try to make it work. It's never going to work, beloved. It's never going to work because it was never meant to. Now, and since it is your life and no one else will ever be as invested in it as you, it's probably at least worth trying. I will end with my all-time favorite quote from Henry Ford, and I've said this to you all many a times before. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. So if you think that you can't do something, well, you likely won't be able to ever do it. But if you think that you can, you will. The Bible says, whatsoever a man thinketh, that so he is. So if you think highly of yourself, uh, then people will see you as such because you'll carry yourself with a certain amount of dignity and integrity. But if you don't, well, then people will see you as a lesser person because that's what you'll be behaving like. Okay? Uh, so, and let me say this. You know, I always tell you all that pride goeth before the fall. You should never be too proud. But here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with having pride in oneself. You should absolutely have pride in yourself. Just don't be too proud, prideful to the point that you're boastful. You should never be so prideful that you're boasting about yourself because whatever is given can be taken away. So don't be too proud, but you should have a certain amount of pride because that goes along with integrity. That goes along with integrity because you don't want, you know, to just carry yourself in a way that you don't have pride about yourself, right? Don't you want to look good when you're out in public? Don't you want to speak kind to people? And don't you want to encourage people? Don't you want to do something positive, have a positive impression on people? But that all comes from pride. You have pride in yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you have pride that is, you know, based only solely on ego, not that you're thinking about integrity, not because you have dignity, not because you are a righteous person, but because you have ego, because you always want to do better and be better than everyone else because you want to look down on people and you want everyone else to look up to you. That's not the kind of pride I'm talking about. That's the kind of pride that will lead you to your downfall. Okay. Uh, so Reggie says his integrity is everything to him. Absolutely, as it should be. The Bible says a good name is more precious than silver and gold. Never be too prideful to admit fault. If you are wrong, admit that you are wrong and move on because no one's always right. We all fall short of the glory of God and many of us make mistakes, but be able to own up to those mistakes. Take and accept accountability. Some people will never do that. Rather, instead, they'll blame everyone else. Let me give you a prime example. So I have this friend who I've caught them in lies throughout life. Not a lot of lies, but a few lies here, lies here and there. They're still my friend nevertheless. And so this person told me, and they're a narcissist. They don't want to admit this, but I'm here to tell you they're a narcissist. And they're a Virgo. I've told you that Virgos are often narcissists from my experience. You may have a different experience, but in my experience, Virgos are narcissists. Not all of them, but, but many, I would say. And like myself, I'm a Pisces. Well, Pisces are sensitive. Uh, Pisces can be very petty. And I'm those, I'm both of those. So every sign 
has negative and positive aspects. One of the negative aspects of Virgos, in my opinion, or at least the Virgos that I know and encounter, is that they're narcissists. You see, they never want to accept accountability. They never want to admit faults. They never want to admit that they don't know something because it has to seem that they know everything or at least more than the person they're talking to. And so this specific person, Reggie says, I'm a Virgo. Okay, beloved, you're a Virgo. That doesn't necessarily apply to you, but this is many Virgos. Now, here's the thing. This person told me that they're not a liar. And I, because I called them a liar one day and they said, they're not a liar. And I said, yes, you are. And they said, no, I'm not. And I said, well, I caught you in a lie the other day. And they said to me, if a person tells one lie, that does not make them a liar. Now, I want you all to put ones in the chat if you agree with that. I want you all to put ones in the chat if you agree with that. This person told me that they are not a liar and that you are not a liar just because you tell one lie. Once, if you believe that to be true, once, if you believe that you're not a liar, if you only tell one lie, I see ones and twos. Well, here's what I told them. If you tell one lie, you are a liar. You are a liar. That's just what it is. You could tell one lie or a hundred lies. If you lied, you are a liar by the definition of the word. And here's how I broke it down to them because they continue to try to go back and forth with me, but they can miss me with it. You see, if someone murders someone, are they not a killer? Are you not a murderer? If you purposely murder someone, are you not a murderer? Now you can't say to, to me, to the police, to the court system, to the family of the victim, oh, I only murdered one person, so I'm not really a murderer. Yeah, you are. You are really a murderer. You are really a murderer. And in fact, as Gail says, we are all liars. Of course we are. Everyone lies. Everyone lies. Whether you tell a nefarious lie or just a little small lie. Let me give you an example. Have you ever, and sometimes we lie, you know, for a good reason. Like maybe we don't want to hurt someone's feelings. For example, when a woman puts on an outfit and asks their husband, do I look fat in this dress? And the husband knowing that the wife looks fat and says, oh no, you look great. That's a lie. That's a lie, right? But you lied with a good intention, but you still lied. So for someone to say that they told one lie and that doesn't make them a liar, well, first of all, they're lying because they told more than one lie. Maybe I only caught you in one lie, but you've surely lied before, right? So they sound crazy. But that's what the narcissist does. That's what the narcissist does. Okay, Kathy B says she's lied, but she's not a liar. Really, Kathy? I doubt that very seriously. Okay? So anyway, with that all being said, let's get into the trivia of it all. Let's get into the trivia of it all, okay? Just a second. Okay. So I wasn't talking to you all. If you all couldn't hear me, I had turned my mic off for a second because I was talking to Reno. Okay, so now with that all being said, trivia time. Now let me pull up this email. All the answers must be sent to the root of all evil, 227 at gmail.com. You will have 40 seconds to answer, to get your answers in. If your answer is not in by the time the clock stops, it won't be counted. Answers put in the chat will not be valid. They will be disqualified okay uh so with that all being said let me get my clock ready my stopwatch on my phone okay here we go okay 
The clock starts as soon as I say the question. Everyone get ready. Now, here's the first question. Spiritual gifts. I did a video the other day or I uploaded a video the other day about spiritual gifts. Okay. It was a premiere. Now, the question is, when I talked in that video about the gift of prophecy or healing, what person did I name? I'm going to give you a clue. This person was a pastor. When I talked about spiritual gifts and the gift of prophecy or healing, I said, this person is a pastor, right? But this person claims they can heal and all of that. They have the gift of prophecy. And I said, why don't they ever go to the hospital or to some people that are in hospice care to heal people? Why don't they do that if they really have the gift of healing? Okay. Now, what is this person's name? 40 seconds on the clock. What is this person's name? I already told you that it's a pastor. Okay. Clock starts. What is the name of the person that I was speaking about? What pastor was this? They, I said they always talk about they can heal and stuff like that. And uh, why don't they go to hospice care and go to the hospital, go to St. Jude where the children have cancer? Why don't they go there? No answers in the chat, please. Why don't they go there? You got 15 seconds left. 10 seconds left. Nobody has any answers. Are you serious? <laughs> Time is up. Mr. Hotel is so nefarious. <laughs> Mr. Hotel sent me the answer. First of all, Mr. Hotel, please sit down somewhere because for one, Mr. Hotel already has the ebook. And second, he and his father paid for the ones that I'm giving out to you all for free. So he said, Pastor Wig. That's what he said. He said, Pastor Wig. Now, oh, wait a minute. We do have, we do have a winner. We do have a winner. I just saw this answer it came in at the same time as Mr. Hotels. Let me pull it up so y'all don't think I'm cheating for anybody or being unfair, but we do have a winner. The answer is Peter Popoff, okay? And here's the answer, Claudette. If y'all can see that, let me uh, zoom in a little bit. Claudette got the answer. <laughs> Claudette said Peter Popoff. All right. Shout out to Claudette. Her answer came in the same time as Mr. Hotels. Why Mr. Hotel sitting up here trying to be funny talking about wig. Wig said leave her alone, Mr. Hotel. But she is just like Peter Popoff. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> that is too funny. Uh, C. Stan said love you, Queen. And I love you right, Black Beloved. Okay. I certainly do. And thank you for your kind words and your contribution to the channel, Stan. Okay, so that is too funny. Okay, so Claudette for the win. Now, here's the next question. Get ready on your mark. Get set. 40 seconds on the clock. The clock starts as soon as I uh, say the question. I got the wrong phone. Hold on. As soon as I say the question, the clock will start. Okay, let me reset the clock. Okay, so here's the second question. This question is from the same video about spiritual gifts. This question is, do spiritual gifts come ready to operate? But you can't just give me a yes or no. You can't just give me a yes or no. The question is, do spiritual gifts come ready to operate? And if so, Hold on. Do the spiritual gifts come ready to operate? And if the answer is yes, then tell me how. If the answer is no, then tell me why not. Okay. And I told you all this answer in the video. Okay. Do spiritual gifts come ready to operate? If yes, explain how. And if no, explain why not. Time starts now. 40 seconds on the clock. 
40 seconds on the clock, beloveds. Twenty seconds left. If you're not, if you're not sure if you know the answer, just put anything. Just take a guess. Go off of your intuition. Time's up. Time is up. Okay. Okay, let me see here. Okay, I have a winner. And the winner is, let me see, let me show it on the screen. The winner is Ashley Hodge. Ashley Hodge said the answer is no and said because you have to put in the work. Shout out to Ashley. That's right, Ashley. You have to put in the work. Now, and here's the thing. When I ask you these type of questions, you don't have to quote what I said in the video verbatim, but you do have to be close in the vicinity of what I said. Now, what I actually said was, congratulations to Ashley and Claudette. I'm going to ask one more question. Now, here's the thing. In the video, I told you that no, they don't come ready to operate. They have to be, you know, they have to... uh grow and mature. They have to be matured by you doing the work. Okay. And that's how you get them. That's how you get them to work for you. You see, we're born with spiritual gifts, but we don't know how to hone into them. And in the beginning, and then often we don't know how to, you know, enhance these gifts by doing the work. When you start becoming a more spiritually in tune person, then these gifts are ready to operate because now you understand the power of these gifts and the power of self. Okay. Uh, so that was good, Ashley. Okay. So now let's get ready for the next question. And uh, I'm going to ask four questions. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask two more questions. Now the time starts, the time starts as soon as I read the question. And here's the third question. Those who use spiritual gifts genuinely are glad to do so. Okay. And this is due to inner joy. Where does that joy come from? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I just gave you the answer inadvertently. So skip that. Okay, those who do spiritual who use spiritual gifts genuinely do so or they're glad to do so due to inner joy. Where does the joy come from? Well, I gave you the answer because I said inner joy. That's where the joy comes from within, right? But is there a difference between happiness and joy? Is there a difference between happiness and joy? And if so, how is happiness different? Is there a difference between happiness and joy? And if so, how is happiness different? Time starts now. 40 seconds on the clock. Time start. Uh, the clock is ticking. You got 30 seconds. You got 30 seconds. We got 15 seconds. How is happiness different from joy if they're not the same? Five seconds. Thank you, Dad. Dad said, great question. Time's up. Let me see if anybody sent the answer. Nope. Sadly, no one sent the answer. Here's the thing. Y'all should have easily gotten that. I gave you most of the answer. The difference between happiness and joy is this. Uh, Orange Moon says, baby lemon. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading the emoji thing. Okay. Thank you, beloved, for your contribution to the channel. Peace, love, and blessings to you, Orange Moon. Here's the thing. I want y'all to pay attention. The difference between happiness and joy 
is that I already told you, happy a joy comes from within. In the video, I told you, no one can steal your joy. That comes from within, from your inner self. The difference is happiness is something that can be given to you. Someone can give you happiness. They can make you happy, but they can also take it back. They can also take it back. So no one can steal your joy because that comes from within, from your inner self. Happiness can be given and it can be taken away. That's the difference between happiness and joy. Okay, you all need to remember that. That's a very important message. Okay, so now since I already gave away one of the answers accidentally, I'm going to go to the PowerPoint for the last and final question. Nobody got that one. Now, here's the question that pertains to today's lesson. Let me find a good one. I told you in today's lesson that there are three buckets in life. Things that we can, there's three buckets in life, okay? As it pertains to uh, things that we do to create our own reality. Three buckets in life. What are those three things? Now, let me just give you a hint. Let me give you a hint. Um, this is a part of your power, right? There's, there's things, these things, hold on. There's three, three buckets in life of things that we use when we create our reality. If you deny this, you are denying your power. What did I tell you those things are? The clock starts now. What did I tell you those three things are? The three buckets of life. And you know, really, I'm asking you these specific questions because these questions, the clock starts now. These questions are very important because these are things that you should always take away, or these are some of the most important things for you to take away from the lesson, okay? 25 seconds on the clock. Y'all losing steam. Y'all are losing steam, beloveds. 15 seconds. Three buckets in life. What are the three things? If you deny these things, you're denying your power. Look at Orange Moon talking about I know, I know. <laughs> oh, Lord. Mr. Hotel has given the answer. Time's up. I actually gave y'all a 10 extra seconds accidentally. So, um... Okay, so Mr. Hotel had the answers. And let me just tell you what it is. Things you control, things you can't control, and things you influence. See, I just want y'all to pay attention to how Mr. Hotel was paying careful attention. Reggie said, I lost my steam. <laughs> That's okay, beloved. Okay, so we had two winners today. That's Ashley and Claudette. Shout out to them. The rest of you, pay more attention next time. Okay, pay more attention. So with that all being said, the answer was things that we can control, things that we cannot control, and things that we influence. That's very important for you to remember those things as it pertains to creating our own reality, okay? So with that all being said, I'm going to conclude the broadcast. For those of you who won, I'll be sending you your email, email um, your ebooks. I mean, as soon as I conclude the broadcast. Okay, so everyone, please enjoy the rest of this lovely evening. Each one, teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloveds, to keep the most high first in your lives. Peace.